Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to continue to look at Ornatrix Dynamics. In the last video we looked at setting up uh, some dynamics with mass effects in Ornatrix and came up with some pretty uh, interesting results, uh, really cool interaction um, and great fast simulation times and very useful for uh, I would say a good uh, 70 to 80 percent of uh, production needs. When it goes kind of above and beyond that and you have more fine detail uh, hair work to do um, like the guys over at Blur Studios or other uh, major studios you're gonna want to use something that is a little bit more robust. Uh, Mass Effect is a great engine but one uh, other drawback that I didn't get to mention in the previous video was that it doesn't interact with any sort of deforming mesh. So if you want to do simulations on characters that are deforming, uh, you're going to have to create uh, some proxy objects for the hair to interact with that are rigid body objects. And that's usually just fine to do. Uh, that's exactly what mCloth does. And uh, you can get some great results with that as well. For something that's a little more robust, People have been using 3ds Max cloth for years in order to simulate hair strips. 3ds Max's cloth modifier is a, a very powerful and uh, great modifier used in uh, a lot of effects houses for doing all sorts of different simulations. And uh, cloth for hair is done uh, for a, a ton of different studios all over the place. In Ornatrix, what we've done is really just make this much easier to use. Uh, instead of using scripts that do selections and uh, paste things back onto hairs and do you know create um, splines out of meshes, uh, we do that all in, in kind of a couple of modifiers so you don't have to back out and go back in. So I'm just going to go into Mass Effects and uh, let's unbake everything. And I'm just going to delete these modifiers uh, because I don't need them at the current time. We'll just zoom in on that. Probably get rid of our pea bomb hair. Get rid of our hair for now. What we're going to do is we're going to add a mesh from guides, which we had before. So I'm going to go in and choose OX mesh from strands. And you can see that this gives us a mesh on our guides. And we're going to set these to billboards so that they're kind of flat. I'm going to zoom in again. And these would be the cloth strips that we want to uh, simulate. And all we really need to do is add the cloth modifier to them. So there's no you know, exporting or doing anything else weird. Uh, just add cloth and you'll be able to simulate them. So I'm going to go in and add a couple of objects in order to simulate. So under object properties, of course, I have my uh, hair object, which I'll set to cloth. And I'll probably set to a generic heavy. And I'm going to add in my hair surface that we can uh, collide with and click on OK. Um, actually, I just want to make sure that those are set because uh, I think this uh, cloth dialog has a bit of a problem with doing that. So we'll just make sure that the hair object is set there. And now we can just simulate. So I'll choose simulate local and we'll get pretty much the expected result. Um, these aren't attached to that object with anything, so they just kind of fall down like a bunch of ribbons. We can fix that right away. So uh, we'll just choose Reset State, go into Subobject Group, and we want to make a group. So what we're going to do is uh, actually when you go into uh, OX Mesh from Strands, one thing that you want to do when you're using this workflow is check this checkbox right here, Export Guide Mesh Data. And what that's going to do is it's going to export some selections and some information to pass up to the stack so that we can convert these back. So now when I go into cloth and I go into the sub object group, I can scroll down here and say get stack selection. And that's going to select all the vertices that we would want to attach to our sphere or head or character or whatever it happens to be. Now we can take those and we can say uh, make group and I'll call this pin and we can maybe uh, surface it to that node or we can choose a preserve or something like that. Uh, we could also probably go down here um, and we'll just check soft 
pop back out and do our simulate local. So you can see these kind of just fall into place. And uh, the reason why I checked that soft option is because I want to get some sort of soft selection, but uh, what you need to do is uh, you need to kind of make that before you pair this. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to make a new group. And now I'm going to go down and, and grab that soft selection. And uh, I'll give this a couple some edge distance. And I can just kind of ramp this up. So I don't really need a lot. I'm just looking to kind of puff up the roots a little bit. And now I can choose preserve, pop back out. I'll uh, erase and reset that state. Simulate local. And we might need to tune that a little bit. So I'll hop back in. Oh, soft was not checked for that one. So that's what we needed to do. And now you'll see it'll kind of puff up the roots a little bit, so on and so forth. So if we have deforming meshes or anything else we want, uh, we can have that. So I'm just going to take this and simulate it. Uh, let's just actually uh, erase the simulation and uh, reset it. And we'll simulate it just kind of falling into place. Should be pretty fast, fairly accurate to simulate. And I'll cancel that there. And once we're done with this, uh, again, uh, we don't have to run any scripts or jump through any hoops. We can just go into Ornatrix and say, uh, OX guides from guide mesh. So when I choose that, it's just going to turn what the cloth modifier passes up into actual guides. So now we have that animation there. Now this is a little bit low res and either, you know, we could simulate at higher res, which would be fine, um, or we could take this and add an OX strand detail. And you can see that smooths it all out. Uh, probably 40 might be a little bit overkill. And we'll choose 20. Uh, and you can see that's all nice and smoothed out uh, and set up there. Now on top of this, we'll add our OX hair from guides. And the one thing that we'll want to do is uh, under guides from guide mesh, make sure that we pick our base surface. So I'm going to click on here to pick this as the base surface. And that's going to allow us to kind of uh, take those guides and propagate it up to that. So now we have our hair simulated with cloth very easily. Great to do for deforming meshes and all sorts of other situations. Now, those are probably the two major ways to uh, animate or to simulate with dynamics in Ornatrix. You can take them both and, and do some really exciting things with them. Uh, there's also other ways inside Ornatrix to uh, do simulation. You might want to check out the Ornatrix shell modifier, which will allow you to bring, build shells of your mesh that just kind of uh, will animate an overall kind of position using some mesh data, maybe some animated uh, skin mesh data. And there's actually a good example of that on our site that Snowball did uh, with uh, a porcupine, I believe. So you can kind of check that out on the front page. Also, because it's kind of built so tightly with the core of 3ds Max and the modifier stack basis, you can use all sorts of 3ds Max modifiers. If I take this and we'll just go way back down to the cloth setup, any of these splines, you can do things like grab an FFD. We'll just choose the 4x4x4. And if you had some of them that you wanted to kind of work on and animate very simply, you certainly could. Or if you had, you know, some tweaks that you wanted to do with them. So if I kind of go in here, uh, I'll make a key there, kind of move those out over here. Move them back. So we have those kind of moving out. I'm going to move these in. like so. So you can kind of just do maybe some spot animation movements or checks or things like that and even pass them up the stack. Um, and you can go ahead and add your OX hair from guides right on top of that and you get a little piece of animation there for your hair. 
And you can also choose, I had an artist ask me about, you know, that they were using a tool and they just wanted to morph the hair. They had the position, they knew the style, they knew what they wanted to happen with the hair. Maybe it was a special effects type of thing. And uh, you can absolutely use morph modifiers with this hair. So if I grab this and make a copy of it, and then I can do any sort of things that I would do with edit guides here. So I'll go and I'll grab my brush and I'll brush this into some position that I'm happy with. Maybe these all need to blow over here in this particular morph target. Then I'll go over here with the morpher. Just pick our hair object and you can see we have the morph that kind of goes right like that just to animate that over time. So we'll go to frame 30, morph into that shape, go over here, morph back into that shape. And on top of this, we'll add our OX hair from guides. So you can see the animation there in your hair. So those two things, you know, uh, as well as other, any sort of other modifiers that you might use, those are all kind of for just tweaking your hair or doing really basic animation. You just want some hair to kind of blow in the breeze and you're not really too worried about the dynamics there so much and, and what it has to collide with. Trying to get simple kind of production examples that will get the job done uh, if you just need to animate some hair. That's a little bit about dynamics with Ornatrix and uh, animation of hair with Ornatrix. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.